Hey everyone, welcome back to the Everton Career Mode, it's Season 2, Episode 3, and we've started off so well guys, 4 out of 4 wins, only 1 goal conceded, and considering how woeful we were in the past season, I think this is amazing, but now it's time to kick on, we have such an exciting episode guys, we started off against Barcelona in the Champions League, I'm so excited, it's our first Champions League game, we get to test ourselves on the biggest stage, after that, we're going to have a home game against Brentford. That's never easy. I always struggle with them. And then we actually drew Man United in the Carabao Cup. So a bit of a tough draw and it's going to be a difficult episode. Before we get started, I just wanted to go over our squad because we had such a long and interesting transfer window. And I just wanted to see who we have left going into the rest of the season, guys. So let's have a look here. Okay, so Jordan Pickford is our starting goalkeeper, 85 overall now, guys. He's absolutely world-class. I wonder if dynamic potential will kick in and maybe we can juice something else out of him. Hilton will be his backup. He's the guy from the youth department, great potential in the high 80s. So maybe late on in the series, he will take over. Cooley Bali is the first name on the team sheet at center back now, guys. He is an absolute beast. And to pair with him, we've got Holgate, who's made massive strides. He's an 81 overall now. And Godfrey, I'm putting him on ball playing defender this season in the development plans so that he can iron out those errors and he'll be very valuable going forward. And then our fourth CB is Branthwaite, guys, with the sale of Keane. He is now our fourth CB. And I'm going to give him as much minutes as possible because at 20 years old, if you think about it, over four years, he can actually be better than both Holgate and Godfrey. I really want to get him improved. At left back, we still have Dean and hopefully he will be with us for a few more seasons until Sean Rogers is ready, guys. 16 years of age, 67 overall. And if you look at the stats, I mean, he's primed to be our starting left back in the future. Great pace at this age. Stamina. He's got the defensive stats. He can put a ball and he has high and high in the work rates. Such a good player for the future and so young. I am so excited for this guy. At right back, obviously, we have Ahrens, who is our starting right back. But then Giovanni Di Lorenzo is giving him a run for his money. He's actually higher overall by two. But I'll stick with Ahrens. Di Lorenzo will play a lot of minutes at right back, some at left back. So he'll have plenty of game time with all the competitions we're in. Coleman can still do a job there for us, but I've moved him to CDM because that's where his stats can be most useful right now. He doesn't have the pace or the stamina to be a fullback anymore. But our primary central midfielders that we bought in the transfer window are Calvin Phillips. And I mean, this guy is perfect for that more defensive box-to-box -box role. He's got the passing. He's got the defensive stats. He's going to be a very good replacement for Allen, I promise you. And then to pair with him, Gwenduzi, who's that more offensive box-to-box -box role. And he has a little bit of potential still on him. I mean, he has already 83 vision. He's got great stamina. He's a little bit faster and can surge into the box. I feel like he will be perfectly suited for that more offensive role. We still have Dukure, who, I mean... He's hit the ground running after that injury. Three goals already this season and he is not giving up his spot without a fight. And I am more than happy to play him because he is just excellent. Tom Davies is very good now and he can easily step in and provide quality. And then we have Josh Da Silva who's our left-footed central midfielder. I've wanted one for some time and he is also primed to be a great one for us in the future. I mean, he has a very well-rounded set of attributes. There's really no weakness, and he's capable of going both forward and defending, but he, going forward, is just so lethal with that long shots and shot power. He can be a guy similar to Gwenduzi for us, but on the left-hand side, and I'm really excited to get him up Todd Cantwell is, again, another central midfielder, but more so when I play the 4-3-3. I also want to use him on the left and right side in the season, guys, because he's getting that speed up and he can be a real creator from those wide areas. But again, our main guys are not changing there. Alan St. Maximin, our driving force, our dribbler from the left-hand side, and Gakpo, who's an 83 now on the right-hand side, 
that great finisher with the outside foot shot. Nothing is changing there. Their subs primarily will be Cantwell from time to time, but Townsend, again, the most assists last season in the league. I'm still going to play him a lot of minutes because he's so reliable. And David Brooks, if you see, he's going up fast, and he will take that spot from Townsend, I feel, in the next season. He's a great player to have, and with Townsend aging, he's a natural replacement. Now, we still have Damari Gray, who will operate both off the left, the right, and the striker, so he's a bit of a utility man for us. Richarlison, though, will be the first name on the team sheet in terms of attackers, and he's going to be paired with Calvert-Lewin. For now, Calvert-Lewin is injured, and... Ivan Tony has stepped in and done wonders. He scored a hat-trick against Wolves. Just, just amazing what he's been able to do coming in on such short notice. Mopai is again our second substitute. So we bought the two strikers. We have depth in this position now, guys. And I'm counting on all of them to hit the ground running. And with these kinds of stats, I don't see why he can't be banging in goals as well. The rest of the guys are sort of fringe players or players I'm looking to loan out. Gordon, definitely I'm looking to loan out. But there's a number of players who are just not good enough and will be sold. There's some youth players I'm still looking to loan out. Rondon is still on the list. So all these guys will be either loaned or sold. The core of our squad is very strong. We have 26 players that really can impact the game. All right, so it's time to move on to the Barcelona game, guys. And like I said before, Dominic Calvert-Lewin will not be available. He picked up a four-week injury in the Wolves game, and I'm gutted for him because he won't be able to play our first Champions League game. But it's next man up, and he'll be back soon enough to help us. This Barcelona game, though, it's going to be a tough nut to crack because much has been said about the demise of Barcelona, but they still have wonderfully gifted players. Aguero can still put the ball in the back of the net despite losing a lot of pace, and then they have Dembele, guys like Depay, who will torch you, they are good at dribbling, they're fast and very dangerous, and behind them a highly, highly technical midfield, maybe not Xavi, Iniesta, Busquets, like in the in the old days, but Pedri can play a ball in, Pjanic and De Jong, I mean, 93 short pass from De Jong, like this is a team that is going to keep the ball a lot, we're not going to have a lot of it, and that's where they're most dangerous. So we're going to have to hit them on the counter and take our chances. In terms of their defense, I mean, it's not what it used to be, like I said. But they've got Mazraoui. We wanted to pick him up early on. And he's become one hell of a player. Very pacey. And Dalot, this whole team is sort of set up to attack and have the ball. They're less concerned when they don't have the ball because they have just have so much of it. So there is weaknesses that can be exploited. Lenglet and Garcia for a top, top side like Barcelona, this is below average. So we can definitely have some joy here. And I'm going to set up a little bit differently in a 4-3-3, but without Dominic Calvert-Lewin especially, I'm going to set up with a highly pacey and technical front three who will look to break. And then the three in midfield will be very solid defensive players. I'm not going to play a guy like Cantwell in this game. I'm going to play Ducouré, Phillips, and Guendouzi all capable defensively and all solid so that we have as much disruption as possible in that midfield. I don't want to get outplayed outright. And then the back line, I'm going to stick with what I think is the strongest so far in this season. Godfrey and Koulibaly have kept two clean sheets, so I'm going to go with that. All right, guys, here we go. Our first Champions League game against Barcelona. All right, guys, here we go. Everton Barcelona Champions League kickoff. So exciting. The last time Everton was in the Champions League was in 2005 when Moyes got fourth in the previous season and they crashed out against Villarreal. But now it's our turn and we attacked Barcelona. I was brave. I wanted to have a go, like I said, to give the fans something to cheer about. 
and our first chance here, fourth minute, Aarons gets it, he crosses it in, Gakpo dinks it, Alan St. Maxim and it's 1-0, one 1-0, nil. One nil, get in, oh my goodness, we're up in the fourth minute, what a start, what a brilliant start, some woeful defending from Barcelona because that should have been headed out by Pjanic but he didn't even make an attempt. Gakpo flicked it on and Alan St. Maximin gets a great goal, great presence in the box. Barcelona though, I mean, when they had got finally got the ball, they were dominant and they quickly went on the attack straight from their own kickoff. They play it well, they play it into Aguero and this is just a dirty finish. 1-1 one, one, guys, that lead dissolved in no time I mean what am I supposed to do against the finish like this it's great passing I mean from that angle that is one hell of a goal and they would not let up guys because they continued to attack the instant they got the ball they were so threatening Barca on the ball and off the ball are just two different worlds and here we go an instant cross right here a great save by Pickford he bailed us out what a save on that Memphis Depay shot that was a volley Pickford was scrambling across goal. He knew where this was going and he got it out. And they continued to attack. But we finally had our own chances and we countered quickly. This is exactly how we wanted to play, guys. Because once we get the ball, we want to move it very quickly. Where Charleston gets it. He chips it and it hits the crossbar. Oh my goodness, what a chance. We continue to attack. There's a bit of a lull in the game. We took a breather and Alan St. Maximin continued to drive playmaking from central areas. Gakpo gets it and he buries it. 2-1 guys, yes! This is always going to be a high scoring game with Barca because when they have the ball, I can't do much to stop them. And when we have the ball, they're pretty defensively inept. And this time it's Alan St. Maximin feeding Gakpo and he buries it guys. 2-1, there we go. Barcelona cranked it up in the second half, guys. I mean, they start with the ball and you think I'm getting it? No, that's how good they are. Literally, every time they have the ball, it's a legitimate threat at goal because I just can't get it. That's how well they keep possession in this game. And it's so good. I mean, Aguero gets it. And I'm not sure what Koulibaly is doing here going on the other side. Bar down. Bar down for Aguero. That is... It's 2-2, guys. And that is just... Another dirty finish from Aguero. This guy is so good. He's still world-class, at least in the finishing department. I mean, look at this. This is crazy. I'm not sure, again, what Koulibaly is doing. I mean, why are you going on the other side of him? It makes no sense. But all right, here we go. 2-2, two, two guys, and Barcelona kept coming and piling on the pressure for the first 15 minutes. They cranked it up so hard. My guys couldn't breathe. I didn't have the ball barely at all. And Pickford had to bail us out continuously. Against the run of play after that, Ducouré flies in and it's 3-2, guys. Wow, Ducouré, four goals this season already. I mean, that's more than he had all of last season. And he is saying, no way am I losing the starting spot in this squad. That's He is sending me a clear message, play me. And I mean, I am much obliged because this guy is scoring in literally every game this season. Heading, slotting it and it doesn't matter. But Barcelona would continue to attack after this. I had that one chance, like I said, against the run of play. But it was Barca continuously attacking. This time it's Depay and Pickford had to make save after save. Quality saves. And this is exactly what we have him for. I decided to make a substitution at that point and bring on Mopai. Put out Richarlison on the wing and Davies just to give some fresh legs. Maybe we can get something on the counter, I thought. And we had... A few chances, maybe one or two. This was the most notable one. I throw it in from Richarlison. They get it back. I pressure the ball and Barcelona makes a mistake. We get it, square it to Mopai, and it's blocked. But Mopai should have done better. He should have placed it better. That was a golden chance to go up 4-2, guys. And this might come back to haunt us because literally the entire game... I was scared of losing goal after goal and Barca would continue to attack. I mean, look at this. Here we go. They play it around very well. They get a good shot. And who do you think? Pickford again. This guy is just outstanding. 
he is saving us this game because they continually i mean this is the best of the bunch too look at this he's flying for that pedri a place shot but pickford makes this save and again barcelona continues to attack look at this look at this through ball here in for De Jong, it's another save. I mean, I have no words. I decided at this point to bring on Townsend for Gakpo because Townsend comes back a lot more than Gakpo does on defense. And I thought we needed that solidity to bring this home because it was already the 80th minute. We finally wear the clock down and I felt like it was a good time to have one last opportunity we play it around. I decided to have a really good goal here from Richarlison. And Mopai got on the end of it, guys. First to the ball. It's 4-2. 4-2. This surely secures the win against Barcelona, guys. I mean, what a performance from our players. Such a good performance. And I'm thinking, all right, here we go. The game's done and dusted. But Barca has a kickoff and they have a few minutes. And that's all they need, isn't it? What do you think is going to happen, guys? I mean, it's going to be 4-3. And you can see here, this is just ridiculous. I mean, look, they just play around with me. On the ball, these guys are just world class. One of the best I've played in this series. I mean, look at this. He's just playing around. He squares it. Turns again, bar down. I mean, Pickford, on the goals he lost, he had no chance. He had no chance. Like, the goals he lost were just unsavable. They were unsavable. This didn't matter in the end because we got the win, guys. 4-3. It was a goal fest for our first Champions League game. And we get the win at Goodison against the strongest opponent in our Champions League group. And this sets us up to get out of the group, guys. I am so excited for the upcoming games. But for now, we get the coveted W. Alright guys, so I wanted to update you on the youth department. As you can see, at the beginning of the season, I sent all my scouts out for 9 months to different countries to scout different types of players. So we'll see who they come back with. But I feel like in this series, we are utilizing the system well. And there's a number of prospects that have come through. Most notably, Sean Rogers, that 16-year-old, 67 overall left back, who I'm hoping will be the long-term replacement for Dean. But there's other players like Hilton who have gotten playtime, Talbot, Jensen who has 88 potential, who I'm really high on. So we're utilizing the system, but it's not a playthrough or a series that is really focused on Youth Academy. So I'm going to dial it down a notch in the sense that I'm not going to have a full 16-man squad. I'm just going to have 6 or 7 players. It's much more manageable. And so when they come back, I will replenish this and update you. But so far, it looks like there's a number of high-quality players that we're able to scout here. Matthew Power, I mean, great starting overall. Same with Joan here. So I feel like there will be a number of players who we might be able to pick up. And I'm continuously looking for teams that will take on Jansen and other players on loan without an option to buy. And I will update you on all of this when the time comes. For now, it's on to the Brentford game, guys. And I'm interested to see what will happen, how they'll play without Ivan Tony. Now, they have replaced him with Petania, and he looks like a really good player. They're pairing him with Deris Voglu. They both are really good at dribbling and short passing, so there will be a lot of interchange of position, and I'm really interested to see how that will work out. Behind them, you've got Norgard and Onieka. Onieka will do a lot of the running. Norgard will sit back. It's a decently balanced midfield. They've brought in another midfielder who has 83 to 87 short pass, so that'll give them a lot of quality. They have Ayer at the back, who's really good. They still have their captain, Pontes Janssen, Rico Henry, flying down the left-hand side, so there's a lot of quality in this team. But there is a few weak spots. The right wing back and the right center back are just not up to snuff. They're not even championship players in my opinion. So there is certain things we can target in this game. Now I am going to rotate heavily here. It's a game at home in the middle of two very important games. So I'm going to play Mopai and Tony, Brooks and Townsend. I don't want to rotate too much other than that. I am putting in Rodgers in this game. I want to try him out. This will be the first game for Sean Rodgers, guys. I'm going to start him. This is a game I feel like he might do well in. I'm going to sit out Koulibaly as well. 
So there is a number of changes here. It is a risk, but I feel like there is a lot of quality even in this substitute lineup. And I'm just going to see how it goes. I might bring on some starters if we're having trouble. But for the most part, I'm hoping we can get a decent result here against Brentford. Will you please make some noise as you welcome our Vistas Brentford and your very own... To be fair, we actually started this game off really well, guys. And we had a number of opportunities early on. Really good counters here. Mopai gets on the end of it and he squares it for Ivan Tony. And this should have been put away, guys. That was 100% opportunity wasted. But we were really good this game. Switching the play, doing a lot of good things. Ivan Tony getting into great positions. He just left his shooting boots somewhere. We couldn't break them down. But we were having a lot of chances. Here we go, another decent chance. We play it around. It falls to Davies, who tries to curl it. And it's a nice effort. We were all over the place trying to make something happen. But then slowly we started getting sloppy and mistakes started to creep in. And this is what I mean, guys. This is an easy pass in for Tony. It's misplaced by Davies. And this was an occurrence that happened time and time again. That started creeping in in the 40s. Here again, this should have been an easy pass. Not so. The second half started off terribly, guys. Look at this. Easy pass to Mopai, right? Just run forward. Nope, he goes backward. I don't understand why he went backward. And then this. Sean Rogers closing down the ball. Everyone's covered. Dean just has to get back. Look what happens. I mean, okay. Pass in. Dean, run back. Dean, run back. No, Dean's not running back. Oh, my goodness. The ball is played through our center mids, through our center backs, and it's... 1-0 and that is the sh most shambolic goal I have lost in a long, long time. This harkens back to games against Villa. And this is what happens when guys like Koulibaly don't play. When guys are rotated, they're clueless. I am so cheesed right now. I decided to bring on some of my starters, Cantwell and Maximin. And hopefully this was supposed to give me something to go on. And Maximin drove as usual. But Brentford was clever. They played him down the line and a second defender was always helping. It was great play from Brentford. It took me a while to get anything from this game. And finally in the 78th minute we were able to fashion a chance. Davies was open for long shots the entire game. And he curls one in guys 1-1. One, one. But I am still annoyed at the goals we're losing. Or that goal in particular. Because it's just so annoying to go down against Brentford in such fashion. When it's a very simple thing. Just get back. Davies, a great finish here. He deserves that goal. He was popping off with shots the entire game. I decide to go offensive here. I changed to a 4-3-3, but I actually put on fresh guys. And De Silva is a more attacking central midfielder. I put Alan St. Maximin out wide, so there's no potency lost. And I decided we have to have a go here. It's Brentford. We should be winning this game. It's a home game against Brentford, guys. Come on. Now... We don't get many chances, and it's actually Brentford, which a great switch of play there. Just amazing. They play it around, and this is another criminal error. How does he have so much space? Guys, this is unacceptable. Unacceptable. Phillips does not close him down. The CDM has to close down the ball in these situations, and if he doesn't, or even if he does, Godfrey has to step out. You'll be able to see in the replay here in a second. Godfrey has to step out and close down the threat. You can't give a guy like this time on the ball. You can't give anyone time on the ball in the box to turn and have a shot. Or it's going to end badly. And it did. And I thought it was over, guys. We had one last chance. A Hail Mary. It falls to Ivan Tony here. He literally throws a Hail Mary ball here. A striker with that kind of a pass. Cantwell gets on the end of it. He rides the challenge. And guys, he puts it in. 2-2. Two, two. Wow, we actually salvaged something from this shambles of a game. And it's Todd Cantwell, guys. He has been stepping up. And what a goal that is. Harkens back to that Gakpo goal where he brought it down with his head. And he fired it past Spurs. But this... In the last minute, literally the last kick of the game, to, to get a tie, 
And it's such mixed feelings because you should be winning against Brentford and you shouldn't be losing these shambolic goals. But I mean, to be down and 90th minute, it's always a good feeling to get that point to scrape like this. I mean, dare I say, dare I dream, because last time I said this, champions scrape losses into draws, draws into wins. Maybe, guys, who knows? But for now, it's 2-2. Like I said, mixed feelings. I'm a bit disappointed. All right, guys, we're going to jump straight into our Carabao Cup fixture against Man United. And it's a tough draw for the first round of the Carabao Cup, but there's a number of rotations that make this maybe a little bit more easier. They're playing Chong on the left side, they're playing Garner and CM, and they're playing two inexperienced center backs in Bernard and Menji. So it's going to be interesting to see if we can take advantage of this. Now, there is some quality in the side. Obviously, Ronaldo, Fernandez, Sancho are all still playing. So I think the best way to win this game is to actually keep a little bit more possession so that their front players don't have it and against these inexperienced cbs i fancy my chances so let's go here guys this was pretty easy guys i mean i'm not gonna lie manu was not up for it especially in this first half i mean we ran them ragged. Look at this pass from Cantwell into Gakpo and it's 1-0 in the 10th minute. What a ball from Cantwell. I mean, that is just ridiculous. The passing range and the weight of pass from this guy is unreal. And it's 1-0 and it was like this the entire game. It was so easy to get anything you wanted against Man United in the first half. Gakpo, great finish. De Gea, no chance. But it just continued. It was a pylon. We ran them ragged here. Again, a chance. We move it around. And it's a crossbar. And it, it just chance after chance. We got an injury to Aarons. And I had to bring on Coleman. Because I had no other right backs. I didn't put Di Lorenzo on. But that didn't stop us from dominating this first half, guys. I mean, it was just chance after chance. They were just pushed back. They didn't have much of the ball. Guendouzi plays a nice ball in here. We move it around. In for Da Silva who runs in like a box to box should and it's 2-0 guys. We are flying in the 22nd minute. We're up against Man United and okay it's a rotated squad but this is a great result for us here so far and we just kept on coming. Now Man United had maybe one or two chances in this first half. A great save this time from Hilton and we go straight on the counter guys and they fold like wet cardboard. This team that they put out especially in the first half, just folded. They folded and we were able to get opportunity after opportunity. Here we move it around again. It The ball comes in. It's a very juicy one. Back post. Cantwell and oh, that was so close. Saved by De Gea. Now totally against the run of play here. Man United get a chance. And who else? But the guy who always buries us, a great move and no chance for Hilton. It's Fernandez coming up with a goal. And all of a sudden, guys, it's 2-1 out of basically nothing for Man United. They created nothing so far. Guys, we started the second half off so well. Look at this chance where Charleston gets it. He chips the hay, it falls to Gakpo two meters away, and he doesn't get it in. How does that even happen? Gakpo, how did you miss that? And it came to bite us in the ass. It could have been 3-1. Instead, look at this play from United, and it's 2-2, guys, and it's starting to get nervy because from a game that was just so easy in the first half, United cranked it up. They tightened the screws, they brought on substitutes like Nabry, and that made all the difference. I tried to claw back, I put Alan St. Maximin and Ducore on to add a little bit more offensive firepower, and I tried to go for this game, but it was United who had the better opportunities. They move it around well, and it's a post that was so close, and when I thought the game would have ended in a tie, they came back in the last, literally the last minute, the last kick of the game. It's Gnabry, the guy who came on, and no one is closing him down. No one is putting in a tackle. It, this is infuriating. They're just standing there and vacillating. They're not putting in a tackle. And it's 3-2, guys, and that's it. We lose this game after I said it was so easy, and it was. 
we don't manage to bring it home because we were just too complacent, I think. And we didn't take our chances, certainly. And unfortunately, we lose this game. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next episode. Laters.